Hi, I'm Olivia, and today's happy nugget comes from Helen Keller, the American author, lecturer, and educator. Helen Keller was born in 1880 in Alabama. When she was 19 months old, she was stricken with a disease that plunged her into darkness, leaving her blind and deaf. She was a precocious child, fascinated with nature, and eager to belong. But her frustration at her inability to communicate led her to violent fits of temper. When she was six years old, a young woman named Anne Sullivan became her beloved teacher, guardian, and mentor. For the first time, Helen understood that everything has a name. When Miss Sullivan spelled the word water into her hand, and Helen realized that the cool stream that gushed over her hand was water. When she did, the mystery of language was revealed to her, and her soul was set free. This struggle is depicted beautifully in the 1962 film The Miracle Worker with Anne Bancroft and Patty Duke, based on the play of the same name by William Gibson. Anne Sullivan's patient love, understanding, and guidance helped the beauty that was in Helen's soul to blossom. She opened Helen's mind to the infinite knowledge and possibilities of the world, and in doing so, she unlocked Helen's capacity for empathy and compassion. Helen Keller had a brilliant mind, an insatiable curiosity, a fierce determination. But the brightest star in the constellation of her soul was her spirit, joyous and loving. Helen had a dream of going to college at Radcliffe with seeing and hearing girls. To that end, she struggled and studied for years to prepare herself for that challenge. In a long and tedious process, she taught herself how to speak by catching the vibrations with her fingers in the throats of others, the movement of the mouth, the placement of the tongue, the expressions of the face. She worked tirelessly to articulate each sound correctly to be able to pronounce words properly. In her wonderful book, The Story of My Life, speaking of her time in college, Helen Keller wrote, There are days when the close attention I must give to details chafes my spirit, and the thought that I must spend hours reading a few chapters while in the world other girls are laughing and singing and dancing makes me rebellious. But I soon recover my buoyancy and laugh the discontent out of my heart. For, after all, everyone who wishes to gain true knowledge must climb the hill difficulty alone. And since there is no royal road to the summit, I must zigzag it in my own way. I slip back many times. I fall. I stand still. I run against the edge of hidden obstacles. I lose my temper and find it again and keep it better. I trudge on. I gain a little. I feel encouraged. I get more eager and climb higher and begin to see the widening horizon. Every struggle is a victory. One more effort and I reach the luminous cloud the blue depths of the sky, the uplands of my desire. The depth of Helen Keller's perception was astounding. With three senses, touch, smell, and taste, she perceived a world so alive few people ever live so fully with five senses because they take for granted what they have. They don't stop to perceive, to experience, to wonder. Helen Keller's writing is absolutely lovely her impressions deeply wise and humorous, her thoughts so vibrant. She opens up a world of tactile wonder and silent introspection. Her love of life teaches us to see beyond sight, to hear beyond sound, to rejoice in every miracle of nature. Beyond our senses, there is an intellectual horizon that is limitless, a spiritual wisdom without boundaries. What we are capable of imagining in the world is a reflection of what we see inside ourselves. In her wonderful essay, The World I Live In, Helen Keller wrote, We defer blind and seeing, one from another, not in our senses, but in the use we make of them, in the imagination and courage with which we seek wisdom beyond our senses. It is more difficult to teach ignorance to think than to teach an intelligent blind man to see the grandeur of Niagara. I have walked with people whose eyes are full of light, but who see nothing in wood, sea, or sky, nothing in city streets, nothing in books. What a witless masquerade is this seeing! It were better far to sail forever in the night of blindness, with sense and feeling and mind, than to be thus content with the mere act of seeing. They have the sunset, the morning skies, the purple of distant hills, yet their souls voyage through this enchanted world with a barren stare. 
The calamity of the blind is immense, irreparable, but it does not take away our share of the things that count. Service, friendship, humor, imagination, wisdom. It is a secret inner will that controls one's fate. The darkness of ignorance breeds sorrow, anger, violence, and a deep and penetrating loneliness. The joy of learning, of looking at things as if you were seeing them for the first time, as if they were made just for you, for your knowledge, for your pleasure, for the wonderful power of your imagination, is the promise that you'll never be alone, that today is an adventure and tomorrow a discovery. And that's today's Happy Nugget. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe. As always, I link below the video anything I recommend. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. See you next time.